All right, so I want to show you how to use a basic phase diagram. So a phase diagram is unique for the particular substance we're looking at. So this example is going to help you guys with water. Our y-axis deals with pressure, and our x-axis deals with temperature. So the main thing with a phase diagram is we want to be able to determine if something is a solid, liquid, or gas. So in this section here, this is where my solids are located. So let's just put an S there right now for solids. And in this section here, this is where my liquids are located. So we'll put an L there for liquids. And this section down here is where my gases are. So we'll put a G for gas down here. Okay. So a problem that you could be faced with is uh, it might say that you're at one atmosphere and you're at 60 degrees Celsius. And it says, what state of matter are you? So I would find one atmosphere on this axis, and I'd find where 60 is here. Now we kind of have to guess, so right about here. So one atmosphere, 60, I'm a liquid. So to answer that question, under those conditions, I'm a liquid. So let's put that dot in, and I'll use red, or actually blue, so that you guys can see it. So I would have been right there. And let's say the question changed a little bit and said, well, what if I increase the temperature to 120 degrees Celsius? Well, what phase change could we observe? So if I started here, and I move that dot from 60 to 120, which is about here, I'm going to cross this red line. That red line indicates where a phase change happens. So if I move this way across the line, that's where uh, vaporization is going to happen. And if I move this way, that's where condensation is going to happen. So back to that question. If I increase my temperature from here to here under constant pressure, I would see vaporization occurring. It would boil, it would evaporate, something like that. Okay, so the other lines also represent phase changes. So in between the solid and liquid section, here to here or here to here, I could have melting or I could have freezing. And then from here to here and here to here, that's where sublimation and deposition are going to happen. So when a solid turns into a gas, that would be sublimation. And when a gas turns into a solid, that would be deposition or deposit. Okay, so we can also observe phase changes on this diagram. So now, here's a good question for you. What if I was right here? I'm on the line. So if I'm on the line, you have an equilibrium going on. You have both vaporization and condensation happening at the same time. So I have both a liquid and a gas present at the same time. So anytime you're on a line, that represents an equilibrium. Now, what about this point right here? And it's labeled as point A, and it's also labeled as the triple point, which I wrote over, but right there, that's called my triple point. So that is the point at which all three phases, solid, liquid, and gas, are in equilibrium. So I have all three, and I have all of these phase changes happening at the same exact time, at the same exact rate. So that's an important uh, point for you to know, and on any test or quiz, you're probably going to see a question on triple point. All three phases at the same time in equilibrium. All right, and there is one more thing to discuss here, and that's with this point. So that is called my critical point. The critical point is used to point out my critical temperature, which is down here. So that's my critical temperature, so we'll call that CT. And then the critical point is also used to find out what my critical pressure is, which is right there, and we'll call that CP for my critical pressure. So those two points are kind of what govern liquids and gases. So let me zoom everything out that we're doing because there's another section that I want to add in here real quickly. So if I am past 
if my temperature is greater than 373.99. So there's a line right here. If I'm past that line, the temperature is too hot in this section for me to have a liquid. So out here, it is impossible for me to have a liquid. So that's why that line stops right there. So I can't have a liquid past this point. Now, pressure also governs that. So if my pressure's too high, I'm not going to have a gas. So there'd be a line right there. So in this section up here, this is where I would have a supercritical fluid. A supercritical fluid is a state that's indistinguishable between liquid and gas. So it would look like a liquid and a gas because we're at such a high temperature it wants to be a gas, we're at such a high pressure it wants to be a liquid, so it's kind of fighting both of those. All right, so one last thing that you can tell from a phase diagram. So we're going to just zoom back in. And I'm going to put a yellow dot on here right there at the bottom. So if I'm right there, you can tell what is the most dense phase of a substance based by this diagram. So if you put a substance under a lot of pressure, it's going to want to go to its most dense phase where the particles take up the least amount of space. So that yellow dot, if I start there and I put a lot of pressure on this substance, it would turn into a solid and then eventually turn into a liquid. So this is the most dense phase for water. Now, if we look at another phase diagram, so let me zoom out real quick. Put that right there. And let's say I had another quick phase diagram. This time it'll look like this, where the slope of that line is positive. I do the same exact little test. If I'm here and I put a lot of pressure in, it's going to end up in my solid section. So if the line, if this line has a positive slope, that means my most dense phase is a liquid, is a solid. And if we look back at the other phase diagram that we had right here, if I end up, if I apply pressure and it goes into this phase, the liquid is the most dense, and you notice this line has a negative slope to it. So if this line's negative slope, then my most dense phase is the liquid. If it's a positive slope, my bones, most dense phase is a solid here. Now, I don't remember that. What I remember is if I pick a point on here and I put it under a lot of pressure, what phase does it end up in? In this case, solid. That's my most dense. If I put the point here and I put it under a lot of pressure, this one would be a liquid. So that test helps me remember it more than memorizing positive and negative slope. So those are phase diagrams. Uh, take a look at anything that I gave you for class, and if you have any questions, uh, please come and see me.